welcome back to the shop and my name is Andrew. This uh, is the great day we get to uh, undo all of this, get all the heavy weights off of here, take the clamps on and see how well we did uh, with our glue up yesterday. And, um, and then the uh, goal today is we need to cut uh, the uh, planks uh, to length, to rough length. We're going to cut them about uh, three inches longer than needed. That would give us some leeway uh, as we uh, cut each end. Uh, the end's going to go closest to the wall. I've checked the wall. The wall has a slight curve to it. And there are some tiles and all that has to be cut in uh, to one end. And then the other end is going to be uh, free and open. And there's going to be a radius uh, at this corner here. Uh, so I need to uh, take a look, see which side is best, and see which end is best. And then decide how I'm going to do my, my uh, rough cuts. And we'll go from there and um, back in a little bit. Okay, so uh, all the clamps have been put away, and now the plank is just sitting on my bench on the uh, carpet, carpet runners. And uh, looking at the joints, and the, the joints are pretty good. There's a few here and there where there was a slightly uh, a slight differential, but not much. Uh, I'm going to go down and, and uh, scrape the glue off of both sides and then uh, I'm gonna, I'll set up to do my uh, rough cut and I'm feeling a little under the weather so I'm gonna put on a dust mask see if I can contain some of the dust There's some uh, diagonal scratches here, probably from the original sawmill when this plank was uh, resawn. So I definitely have to take off a layer off of this side if this ends up being the final side. There's also all kinds of uh, paint splatter, I think from the uh, many decades it, it sat in the garage uh, attic. You probably got some paint splatter at some point, so that's, that's what all these white speckles are. Alright, that's, that's looking really fantastic. Um, there's only a little bit of offset here that could descend at the other end. Uh, probably just due to the, the wood's uh, natural bow. By the way, thank you to viewer Manfred for reminding me that I should be wearing a dust mask, especially with this old wood. He uh, suggested that some old wood like this could end up with mold and mildew spores in the wood, having laid around for so many decades. And I, I thank you for that, Manfred, because you're right. That might be why I've been under the weather the last couple of days. Alright. over and see how the other side looks. This was the top so there wasn't that much glue. But boy, that's a real nice joint. Not, not too much. The whole thing has to be sanded of course, but it was my first time ever doing a biscuit and I'm really happy with that. But now this 
as far as green goes, this has a much more interesting look to it. There's a whole Milky Way here swirl pattern. Hopefully that's visible on the camera. It's a really beautiful swirl. This would be great at the, the front edge. And this one has a swirl pattern, not as, not as interesting. Um, but this would maybe by the, uh, the stove side. So that might actually be a great, great way to go. This is going to be the best choice for the top. Yeah, by the way, this Mondo scraper, this is another estate sale find in a whole box of painting supplies. And there's another one here, same board, about a foot long. So definitely those I do not want to be part of the final design. Uh, so based on the measurements of the existing um, yeah, right about there. So the existing uh, countertop is about uh, 78 and a half inches long and uh, the final design I want to put about an inch overhang at the part that's going to be visible at the, at the visible end 
and at the other end against the wall doesn't need that. So I think I will use these cracks as my guide because from one crack end right there to the other, <laughs> isn't that funny? It's, it's uh, almost exactly 82 inches. 82 and a little bit. Maybe 83. So I think I will do that. I'll, I'll cut these at 83 just inside the open cracks so I don't have to worry about those. And, um, and I can get this down to a more reasonable size. Uh, the end is going to be against the wall, like I was saying, it's got a curve and it's got some tile work and I need to scribe those in so I can jigsaw that shape and make sure that it's going to fit perfectly. And then the end down here is going to be a radius curve. Um, six, six inches is the radius I'm thinking about doing just to take a little bit of a corner off of this part. This is the side that will feed into the into the dining room from here, so I think that will be important. Okay, so let me um, reset the, everything here and I'll set up for the jigsaw cut. Okay, so we're back and I added a, uh, a, a fence to keep um, the jigsaw from, from uh, wobbling or going past my desired cut line, so hopefully this will work okay. Here we go. Forgot my safety glasses. That's not a good thing. This is kicking up all kinds of dust. split right there on the crack so um, I've got a couple of nice chunks of mahogany you can use for some other projects so we'll set that in the scrap pile and um, it wasn't as much tear out as I expected and a little bit of tear out but fortunately this is not the final edge Okay, we're going to reset and down to the other end and, and uh, cut that end as well. Alright, here we are at the other end and we're all set. Uh, same deal, up on blocks. We've got a fence and this time I've checked the fence against the side, the back side, which is very straight and it's actually very square to the back edge. Uh, whereas this front edge, it's got a little bit of a skew to it. Uh, but otherwise we are good to go. Twist my wire a little bit. There we go. Jigsaw blade was flexing under, unfortunately, and cut into this, so that is not good. But fortunately, this is the rough cut, and uh, this actually, this end is going to get scribed and cut in more complicated ways, so that's going to work out good. Okay, so that's going to do for uh, tonight's installment. Uh, just getting this thing rough cut and ready, 
uh, to be uh, taken into the kitchen and uh, so I can uh, kind of do a test fit and see how it feels and be able to scribe this end and get that ready to be cut and then also figure out where the stove notch is going to go. It's about an inch deep from over here and then figure out what the final length is going to be down here and uh, figure out how to put in the radius. Um, I mean, one of the plans was to put on a, a bullnose on this edge all the way around to here and the, the three quarter inch uh, diameter bullnose uh, router bits in the quarter inch shank category like a hundred dollars. Man, the prices have gone up so much since the last time I ever had to buy a router bin and my router it's an older craftsman style and it's got just a quarter inch shank. With a half inch shank ones, it's $35 for a set of five different sizes of bull nose. But I guess the, the quarter inch is the dodo bird and uh, they're more expensive. So. so I've decided rather than use a router to bull nose that I'm going to use my uh, jointer planer and, um, and uh, do it by hand. And, I have a lot of confidence in my ability to do that, and I know the jointer will give me a nice straight edge like it did in the middle, so I can use that to round over this edge and give myself a nice handmade uh, bull nose edge. So, so thank you so much for watching the video and for coming back, and uh, please definitely like the video and share it with your friends, your office, office workers, and, and then also, of course, please do subscribe. I need 500 before I can access all the advanced features of YouTube, and I'm up to, I think, 17 uh, as of today. So thank you for those who have subscribed, but um, I'd like to have a lot more. Thank you so much, and see you guys uh, probably tomorrow night. Thanks.